Griffin, he's star. Present. Present. Alder Bedar is present. Alder Harrington McKinney. Present. Alder Harrington McKinney is present. Alder Martin. Here. Alder Martin is present. Alder Evers. Present. Alder Evers is present. Alder Carter. Alder Foster. Here. Alder Foster is present. Alder Campbell. Here. Alder Campbell is present. Alder Balde. Here. All the ball day is present. We have a quorum. Thank you so much. Joe, would you like to read the instructions? Actually, I think I've got that. Next. <laughs> Uh, welcome to our virtual Common Council Executive Committee meeting. We're going to cover a few basic items before beginning. To the members of the Executive Committee and City staff, the Chair, Clerk, and Technical Facilitators are responsible for muting and unmuting Executive Committee members. Please be mindful that during any roll call, all panelists will be unmuted until completed, at which time their chair, the Chair will place panelists back on mute. Voting will be considered unanimous. However, if you object to a unanimous vote, please use the raise hand feature when the chair asks for objections. After clicking participants at the bottom of your screen, you can find the raise hands feature at the bottom of your participants list. Also use the raise hand feature if you'd like to be recognized to speak or ask questions. This includes staff who are being asked a question. The chair will do their best to call on committee members in the order in which hands are raised. Lowering your hand will take you out of the queue. Please wait for the chair to unmute you before speaking. If you lose connection at any point during the meeting, you can reconnect by clicking the link or calling the number in your original email. If you are watching the live stream, please mute the stream now. There is the 30 to 40 second delay and the audio will cause feedback when you are unmuted. Members of the public who have registered to speak, there are none. If anyone is listening or watching and wishes to speak, you can still register to do so. When your name is called, call the facilitator. Uh, the facilitator will find your name matching the name provided in your registration and permit you to speak. If your name does not match, you will not be permitted to speak. Please wait until you are unmuted to begin talking. The clerk will tell you when your time is up, and if you need to share documentation with the executive committee, please send it via email to all alders at cityofmadison.com. Unless there are questions of you, you will be unable to speak for the remainder of the meeting. In order to keep the meeting with the best quality we can, if you do not wish to speak, we encourage you to go watch the meeting streamed on cityofmadison.com slash city channel or at the YouTube city channel or is City of Madison YouTube channel, or find us on Charter Digital 994 and AT&T Universe Channel 99. Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Tanya. Um, the next agenda item that we have is agenda item number two, which is the approval of minutes of the March 31st and April 9, 2020 Common Council Executive Committee meetings. Do I have a motion? Raise your hand if I do. No hands raised. Oh, I will. Alder Campbell. Move approval. Thank you. And Alder Harrington McKinney. A second. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion or questions about the minutes? Seeing no hands raised, um, we will take a vote by unanimous approval unless anybody raises their hand. I do not see any hands raised, so the minutes are approved. The next agenda item is public comment. Do we have any registrants for general public comment? No, we do not. Thank you. Um, the next item then is disclosures and recusals. Do we have any disclosures and recusals from members of the body? If we do, please raise your hand. Seeing none, the next agenda item is agenda item number five, which is a discussion with the mayor. Um, mayor has joined us, so I will turn the floor to the mayor. 
Thank you, President Bedar. Um, and hello, everyone. Uh, just a few things to cover um, today and happy to take questions on any of them. Um, I wanted to, to start out, I'm sure that you all saw um, that the governor has extended the Safer at Home order um, with a few changes. Um, and some of those changes are relevant to us and our services. Um, so I just wanted to give you an update um, on that um, and also bring to your attention, I'm sure you've all seen it, but the Badger Bounce Back plan for reopening and recovery. Um, if you haven't read that yet, I would certainly encourage you to. I think it provides a, a, a useful framework for how we think about reopening and recovery in the city of Madison as well. Um, but uh, in terms of the new orders, um, there's a few things that were specifically called out in them so that staff are now looking at um, how we're gonna respond to that. In particular, golf courses are allowed to open. Um, so Parks Department is um, looking at how to do that safely, um, including what new uh, supplies or PPE we will need for that and um, we'll see something I think very shortly responsive to that. Similarly, libraries are now allowed to do um, a curbside service, if you will, um, and the libraries are planning uh, if that's something that's feasible for all of our locations, some of our locations, or perhaps none of our locations. Again, with the, you know, always wanting to keep the health and safety of our workforce and um, our residents in the forefront. Um, so I just wanted you to know that those two departments are, are looking closely at the governor's orders and seeing what we can do to restore some level of service there. Similarly, Streets is looking at the yard waste drop off um, to see how we can restore service there. Um, again, contingent on our ability to, to provide the appropriate supplies and protection to workers. Um, but I'm I am um, confident that in all three cases we'll see an increase in service soon. Um, across uh, the rest of the departments, we're also just looking at um, how we can continue to ease back into some services. How we can get um, it, you know we have not had that many people on paid administrative leave, but how we can get those that we have um, on paid administrative leave uh, working. Um, in, again, to restore some of the services that we've suspended. Um, so just wanted to, to bring you up to date and let you know that those conversations are ongoing um, and in further that we're thinking, you know, particularly in, in light of the Badger bounce back that we are starting to think about um, how we would ease into reopening uh, more city services when the time is right uh, based on the public health data. Um, so I'll pause there um, and ask President Bedar, do you want me to take questions after each item or at the end? Um, <clears throat> are there any any questions right now on this particular item? I think Mayor, I don't see any hands raised so you can continue and then we can come back to questions. Okay, thank you. Um, so then the next thing um, that I wanted to highlight um, is some resources that we've been um, looking at in my office that I thought might be useful for you as well. And um, what I'd like to do, uh, if it's all right, is just briefly share my screen so you can see the websites. Um, so I don't know if the host can let me do that. You should have permissions now. Thank you. Excellent. Now I just have to find the correct screen to share seems that I have many open. Let's see. I think this is the one that I want. All right. So, um, sorry, this is going in reverse order. So let me change my tabs around. Um, there we go. All right, so the first one, can you all see the Mayor's Innovation Project website? Yes, yes. okay. 
Um, so the first one is the Mayor's Innovation Project um, has a, a COVID-19 response page. Um, and the interesting thing here is that they have this, um, so they have these uh, resources and updates that are available that are linked here and then they have uh, related news at the bottom. Um, but what's I think most interesting here is their live feed. Um, and you, you can sort it one way or another, but um, it basically it's uh, a bunch of things that cities have submitted to them themselves uh, about various things that they're doing. So they're tagged um, by a sort of issue area um, and you can see there's just a number of things in here there um, they provide links um, to most of the actions. Um, and so, you know, here in terms of food and financial release, you can relief, you can see there's a large number of things um, that they've collected here. And um, the point is not so much any of the individual things, um, but that this is a resource. Um, and particularly in light of CCEC's conversations um, around potential task forces or getting committees reoriented to focus on recovery, um, I thought that this might be a good resource um, for either for CCEC, the council as a whole, or um, the different uh, boards, commissions, and committees as they start to work on recovery issues. And um, there's a lot of information here, um, but it's relatively well searchable, um, they have a bunch of different tags um, that are useful. So that's one resource that I wanted to highlight. Another is a collaboration between the National League of Cities and um, Bloomberg Philanthropies, similar action tracker. Um, so they've got, again, tagged in a number of different ways. Also, you can search and filter and sort. Um, this one has, uh, it's sortable by geography as well. Um, so there's, again, just a ton of information in here um, that might be useful as uh, you think about um, working on relief, response, recovery, et cetera. Um, I will point out that um, the Bloomberg Philanthropies uh, and the um, Bloomberg-Harvard uh, partnership has been putting out um, some really good information um, particularly on the public health side of things um, that's specifically tailored for cities. Um, I couldn't find that link right off the top of my head, but um, it is, it, I think, uh, publicly available. It's they're, They've been fairly active on social media um, and they are putting out a series of, I think, useful articles that I would encourage people to, to take advantage of as well. Um, all right, so that's that. And then the last thing that I wanted to highlight is, um, and I'm sure you've seen this, but uh, the city started putting out a newsletter that is specifically focused on COVID-19. Um, and uh, you can, so anyone can sign up from the City of Madison homepage uh, by clicking get alerts. So right here is the get alert. Um, and then you can get email and or text updates um, that are particularly related to COVID-19. Um, certainly encourage you all to do that um, and to encourage your constituents to do it as well. And I'm just briefly going to switch um, what I'm sharing here um, in case you haven't seen um, Let's see, here we go. Um, all right, are you seeing the newsletter now? Yes. yes. Um, so in case you haven't seen the newsletter yet, um, this is what it looks like. Um, and it has a series of um, articles, most of which link to other things. Um, and of course, a place to sign up. So um, again, uh, just probably useful information. Certainly you could cut and paste into your own um, blogs or email. Um, and um, 
just wanted to to make you all aware of that if you weren't already. And I also wanted to flag that if you have um, ideas, requests, things that you'd like to see covered um, in that newsletter, you should feel free to send them to Katie Crawley in my office, um, who's working closely with the JIC, um, the Joint Information Center, which is the entity that's putting together the newsletter. Um, and that's it from me, but I'm happy to answer questions. Do we have any questions for the mayor? If you do, please your, raise your hand. Uh, Alder Martin. Hi, sorry, was looking for my video uh, button. Um, I was wondering um, if there were any conversations about um, managing potential uh, protests on Friday, um, not just from like a law enforcement standard, but from a, a, a public health point of view, uh, people coming possibly from out of town, bringing possible COVID germs, et cetera. And if there was any discussion of what that would entail or what that we should know about. Uh, thank you, Alder Martin. It's a good question. Um, you know, we are obviously tracking the protests um, fairly closely and uh, trying to walk the line between um, being adequately prepared and not giving them more attention than they're worth. Um, uh, the police department is, you know, ready as they would be for any event like this. Um, I think, you know, from the public health point of view, it's not a lot that we can do um, uh, other than continue to encourage everyone, um, but particularly residents of Madison to practice safe physical distancing, to wear a face covering um, when they're out in public um, and to stay away from large groups of people. Um, you know, this is, it's, it's not complicated. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, if people choose to ignore that public health advice, um, you know, it's it, it. Technically, the protests will be on state land and under the state jurisdiction, um, so there's not a ton that we can do about it. Um, but I certainly would hope that anybody who's coming to Madison will behave responsibly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the mayor? Seeing none, thank you, Mayor, for your briefing. Um, yep. Thank you all. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. The next agenda item we have before us is agenda item number six, which is Legislature 59242, accepting the final report of the President's work group to develop citywide surveillance equipment and data maintenance policies. Um, do we have any registrants for this item? No, we don't. We have none, so I will take um, a, a motion. Um, Alder Campbell. I would like to move Alder uh, item six and seven together since they're paired items. If there is no issues by uh, any members of the body, we will take six and seven together. I see no hands raised, so that was a motion. Um, then Alder Campbell to yes. or. Okay, motion for approval. Do we have a second? Alder Carter. I second. Thank you. Alder Kemba, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, I would. Um, so this is the end of a long journey that um, started with the President's Work Group on Police and Community Relations back in 2016. One of the 13 re recommendations from that group was for the City Council to develop um, a policy on the use and purchase of surveillance equipment since we had no policy at the time. So this is going to be our first ever um, ordinance that has to do with surveillance policy. The group that consisted of Alder Carter, Alder Balde, Alder Skidmore, Alder Zellers, and then just resident Zellers and myself worked for two years. Um, with the assistance of our former legislative analyst, Heather Allen, and then Karen, and with the immense help from um, Sarah Edgerton, Vic Wall, and Marcy Paulson, who are with us at pretty much every single meeting. 
um, we work for two years to um, first, the first year we did a lot of just information gathering. Um, we did a survey of all departments to ask them uh, basically for an inventory of what surveillance equipment they had, what policies they had around using them, uh, storing data, et cetera. Um, there was the only thing that the city had on the books was uh, an administrative process memo that said that every any department that has surveillance equipment has to put their policy on file with the clerk's office. And so we found that that wasn't being adhered to. There were several departments that did, but several others didn't, didn't even know about it. Um, so it was just a tremendous amount of work uh, by staff from every department and almost every department in the city um, to uh, fit, fill out that survey. We also, with the help of our legislative analysts, uh, Heather and Karen, did a uh, comparison. We looked at other ordinances that other cities and counties had across the country. We looked at a, a model um, ACLU ordinance, and um, we thought about what elements we wanted of those ordinances in our own. And then the second year of work really had to do with, um, uh, oh, in addition to surveying, we had actual presentations from all the departments. Um, so the department's head, heads came and talked to us about what kind of equipment they had and what kind of policies they had around um, access, use, data management, data storage, et cetera. So then the second year, um, we just um, worked on developing this ordinance that's in front of us today as, as item number seven um, and thinking about approval processes um, and there were I don't even know how many versions of this thing. For a while, we were jointly working on the, the APM that would go along with it and deciding you know, what should go in the APM, what should go in the ordinance back and forth. And then sometime last, at the end of the summer, we decided, okay, that you know, the mayor can deal with the APM once we have our law uh, written. And so that law is in front of us today. Um, and Basically, it is uh, uh, an ordinance that defines what surveillance technology is. It defines, um, uh, uh, with a long list of things, what it isn't. And it sets up an approval process for uh, the approval of new, uh, the purchase and, and use of new equipment. Um, in the report, you'll see that that is one of the things left over. Although we say there has to be a process, that process needs to be worked out. And I think that's the work that this body can do. The CCEC can, can start working on with the mayor's office um, to figure out exactly the nuts and bolts of, of that approval process. One of the things uh, we came around to agreeing to um, is that we would hope that the bulk of the purchase of new equipment would happen in the course of the uh, each year's capital budget. And so that the request, um, the approval process would sort of go, we would, we would see the request for new equipment around May or June from the departments and then the approval process would take place there. There's another process for um, out of budget cycle um, requests. And then there's a whole different process for highly sensitive um, equipment uh, that you'll see if you read the report or, or look in the ordinance. Um, so that is it in a nutshell, unless any of the other work group members have anything to say. Thank you, Alder Kember. I will also point out that um, city um, staff, Sarah Edgerton and um, uh, Marcy Paul Paulson from the city attorney's office and Chief Wall are with us too. Um, thank you for joining us. If there are questions for them, um, please also raise your hand. I have Alder Harrington McKinney. Um, please go ahead, Alder McKinney. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I want to um, really commend the two year work of this committee and especially the summarization that Alder uh, Kimball gave. Um, and since the we've combined 
uh, item number five and six, so five and six, six and seven. We combine the two. One is the acceptance of the report and um, you know that is absolutely acceptable. But the other thing that I am concerned about is, is that in the ordinance, it uh, says that the Public Safety Review Committee um, was referred and there is no meeting that's scheduled by the Public Safety Review Committee. And when we put, um, when we approve an audit ordinance, this is by law. And um, I would hope that consideration of when the Public Safety Review Committee gets, uh, we stand that committee up, that we give that opportunity to review that and also invite public comment. Because once the law is passed, I mean, it is, the law is passed. And um, to have the opportunity to, re to review that work. Um, I know that um, the alder mentioned that the nuts and, baits, nuts and bolts of the process is not yet formalized, but uh, uh, that is my query is, is that to have the opportunity for that committee, the Public Safety Review Committee, um, and the police do sit in on that committee to really have a further look-see at that committee before we, we uh, approve the ordinance. Thank you, Alder Hankton McKinney. Um, I have Alder Campbell next. So I um, appeared before PSRC two times at two of their meetings presenting these items. Um, and I'm not sure why, I, I guess I had to leave before, I mean, I presented it one month and then I was asked to come back the next month and I came back and I presented them. And, um, and did they really not vote on it? I guess I'm just, I'm just wondering why it says that, um, or I don't recall, I don't recall. And Alder McKinney, I don't think you were there when I presented it, um, maybe the second time. So I, I guess I'd just like to get confirmation, but the committee, PSRC has had two months where they were prepared to, to talk about this already and whether or not they voted on it, I, I can't say. Um. Other um, Kimball, I'm looking into legislature as, as as you're talking, just to to see. Sometimes legislature, as we all know, does some strange stuff. So I'm I'm trying to see. Um, any other others with questions or comments on these two items? Alder Foster. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, all the many people that worked on this. It was obviously a, a big lift, but I think it's really important work and I'm supportive of the item. So thank you all that worked on it. So what, I, um, thank you. I just will um, share that what I'm seeing in Legistar is that it did go to PSRC to, uh, and they did not take action on it. So that's um, what I'm seeing in, in Legistar. Um, Alder Balbe. Sorry. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam President. So I just want to uh, re-echo what Alder Campbell said, uh, and also Barbara, uh, Alder McKinney. Um, so this was a lot of work, so I really, really want to take the opportunity to thank all the elders who were part of it, but every uh, Everybody else who was part of this committee, uh, from the police to our legal department. So it took a very long time, but obviously I think we end up coming up with a very good product. So thank you everybody for the work that went into this, particularly uh, Alder Campbell who chaired the, 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 the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alder Carter. Yeah, thank you. And I was just gonna um, echo the thank yous that have been said prior, but I want to really um, commend Rebecca. It was, it was two years, so um, a long journey. But I also want to thank all the department um, representatives that came to our meeting to uh, explain why they needed the equipment and what they need in the future. And they took the time out. They 
completed the survey and I just want to applaud them for their efforts. In addition to uh, Rebecca Kimball and of course, all of us that served on that committee for two years. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alder Harrington McKinney. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, my question is a general question to whomever on the body or the committee that would like to answer that. Um, if the decision for this ordinance was um, referred, what would be the impact? Um, I, I'm asking that because the Public Safety and Review Committee is in that second phase of being stand up, uh, stood up and that has not been formalized. But I want to know what would, would be the impact if this ordinance was referred until that stand up happens. Thank you. Um, Alder Campbell. So as I mentioned, this approval process we were hoping would go hand in hand with the budget. So the impact would be that we might miss out in this year's budget cycle to get those to get the um, to get those requests up and going and that would mean a ton more work for everyone involved who uh, had planned to purchase or you know use new equipment this year thank you um, any other comments or questions If I see none, um, so I think we're ready for a vote. Um, if you would like to um, take a unanimous vote, um, do not raise your hand. And if you would like to um, actually have a roll call, please raise your hand. So roll call, Alder Harrington McKinney has requested a roll call. So we will go ahead and, and do a roll call. So um, crazy. We'll do a roll call vote. And it's for items six and seven because we took them all together. Okay. Alder Harrington McKinney. No. Alder Harrington McKinney is a no. Alder Martin. Yes. Alder Martin is a yes. Carlos, who is the clerk counsel, said he knew of a case in Ohio and he was trying to track it down where they looked at this. Oops. <laughs> Alder, Alder Evers. Yes. Alder Evers is a yes. Alder Carter. Aye. Alder Carter is a yes. Alder Foster. Aye. Alder Foster is a yes. Alder Campbell. Aye. Alder Campbell is a yes. Alder Balde. Uh, I'm a substitute. Oh, yeah, you're a substitute. But I'd vote for it. I work on it, so. <laughs> 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 we have five yeses and one no. Thank you. So the ayes have it. Um, thank you. So our um, next um, is the updates um, the, from our previous CCC meeting. So I wanted to just uh, make sure to provide an, an update on a number of items. Um, so um, the first update was on the survey to the chairs for the BCCs. Um, I did um, email um, all alders with a, a template of that, that survey and the, the email body that Karen um, sent to the committee chairs. She has sent it out to um, 63 committees and she's just awaiting um, the correct emails for four committees. So um, hopefully by tomorrow, um, all of them will have gone out um, and she will be compiling their responses and presenting it back to um, the CCC and or council um, once she receives them. Um, and I wanna um, thank the elders who, who worked on, on um, creating that survey draft and, and the feedback that everybody um, provided to that survey at the last CCC meeting. Um, the next one was another item that had come up at our previous meeting was the frequency of CCC meeting. 
I just wanted to put it out there that that was an item that is still pending. Um, no particular decisions need to be made um, tonight, but I think generally there was a sense that CCC should be uh, meeting more frequently during the next few months and um, uh, weekly seemed to be um, the, the preference of the body. And then there were two agenda items um, that um, would need to be taken up at the next CCC meeting, but I wanted to give a quick update. One was this continued discussion on the council's role process and structure um, in regards to COVID-19 recovery. So at the last meeting, we saw a, a draft document that um, Alder uh, Furman and Alder Evers with um, assistance from Alder Rohr and Heck had uh, drafted. Um, there was uh, quite a bit of discussion and feedback that was given. So Alder Furman and Alder um, Evers, um, and uh, I think with assistance again of Alder Heck are working on making some, um, integrating some of the, that feedback into, um, into a second draft to bring it to the next CCC meeting. And then there was also discussion brought forward um, by um, a number of, of people, but Alder Harrington McKinney's had, had raised the need to really be talking about virtual meetings um, and equity. Um, and so Alder Harrington McKinney had um, volunteered to uh, work on some, uh, some of the issues and, and ideas around that. And Alder Foster had also worked on that. And actually there's an attachment um, and an email that Alder Foster sent to, to all Alders. So that's another item that should be taken up um, uh, that, that was part of the, the um, items that were discussed at the last CCC meeting. So those were um, all my updates. Um, Alder Hankton McKinney. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I did uh, review the um, attachment from Alder Foster and um, it was a, a very good start on the work that we would like to do. And if Alder Foster is willing to, I would like for us to join together in really developing a format to bring back and present to the um, executive committee um, I'm because I'm still seeing a um, uh, an absence when we look at equity I'm still seeing an absence in those um, groups that we should be considering and so um, we we still have some work to do we have a great start but there is um, some missing uh, groups that uh, we really should be including thank you Thank you, and I will put a plug in that uh, Sarah Edgerton um, has also done quite a bit of, of work around this, this whole issue. So I think reaching out to, to Sarah um, would be also great. So thank you so much, Alder Hankton McKinney and Alder Foster for um, continuing to do that work. Those were all my updates. I don't know if there are any questions regarding the updates. Um, if there are, please do raise your hand. I see none. Um, so with that, the next agenda item is just the, the, the list of our future items that, um, that have come up at previous meetings. Um, so next we have item number 10, um, adjournment. So I will take a motion for adjournment. Alder Campbell. Sorry, I had I had my hand raised for future agenda items. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, Sorry. Yeah, and and just um, assuming if this uh, the 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 item number seven on our agenda today passes council, we will need to start working on um, an approval process for surveillance equipment. Great, thank you, Alder Campbell. So that can be added. Um, Alder Harrington McKinney, move adjournment. Thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? If you could raise your hand if you would like to second. Alder Evers. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, if I don't see your hands raised, we will take that as a unanimous motion of the body. Thank you so much and thank you everybody for joining the CCC meeting um, and uh, we will see you all in an hour and 20 minutes. And I'm sure our IT staff is happy that we did end on time to give them time to prepare. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.